Good evening, everyone, and welcome to another one of our leadership forums. Today, we are joined by the Honorable Mayor Letty Lopez Viado of West Covina. Thank you, Mayor, for joining us. I'm Connor Fox. Thank I'm you Nic for having me. <laughs> I'm Nicholas Hernandez. I'm Ryan Melke. And I'm Ash Nabaya. Nice to meet you. For today's topics, we will be discussing your election to the City Council, your inspiration and driving force behind your leadership, adversities you faced in your life as a notable leader, and how students can be involved in the community. Uh, Mayor Lopez Viado, can you tell us a little bit about your background and what inspired you to run for the West Covina City Council? Well, I was a City of West Covina Commissioner for the Community and Senior Services. And prior to that, I used to live in Baldwin Park. So I was a commissioner for Baldwin Park, but I also currently work for the city of Los Angeles, Department of Recreation and Parks. I'm a senior director there where I run um, pretty much, I have three buildings. I have a senior building with all our seniors. I have a rec center where I run all sports program. I have a youth center with our after school, preschool um, day camps. And we run special events, uh, big events, uh, Easter, Halloween and those big events and including citywide events, Lotus festivals that are citywide. So that I have experience working for different communities. I've also worked for different cities like Pasadena, San Marino, Monrovia. Um, so I was a commissioner and um, there was an opportunity that came up for city council, which at first I was like, oh, I don't know if I could, you know, or I should. And, um, you know, they were telling me about who the elected officials are and uh, background of, you know, their, their current background. And so um, I did not agree with some of the, the things that the former council um, was doing and he's in my district. So I thought it was a great opportunity to run. Ironically is I said, oh, I don't like politics. And friends would say, well, that's even perfect. You'd make the perfect candidate because, you know, you don't deal with the political games and so forth because in LA that is the biggest politics you could ever think of and so um, I decided to take the leap of faith it was it was the most difficult um, task to run because when you're an underdog and nobody really knows who you are um, they make all these assumptions especially people make stereotypes or race or anything that just by how you look so I, I got a lot of that. Um, I ran against four men um, and two of them were seasoned uh, politicians. So they were polished. They spoke very, you know, suave. They knew what to say. And, um, and then the other two, I, um, so it was four men and I was actually the leading person, but it took a lot of work. I had to knock on a lot of doors. Um, I had to uh, talk to many, many people. I knocked over a thousand doors. And this was all during the time where I was getting my home remodeled. So living crunched up, I am a mom of two children. So it's all four of us. And I uh, also worked full time. Then I had a promotion, which I had to drive further out a two hour drive. Um, so there was a lot of, a lot of things that occurred. Um, and as background, um, I'm not the typical, uh, typical person that you would normally see um, because of uh, growing up and my background history and everything. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much, uh, I decided to run because some of the things that I wanted to see occur because I'm more family oriented and I wanted to make sure that is what was the focus. Thank you. Like many others, Ms. Mayor, um, I'm done who's gonna tell the story. I am inspired by your story. My story started off when I was four years old and I had just immigrated to the US from the Philippines. Oh. Life, life at the time not, was nothing short of difficult. I lived in a small house in West Covina's adjacent city of La Puente with my uncle, aunt, grandparents, parents, cousins, and brother. Arguments, disorganization, and financial struggle define my daily life. I seldom saw my parents as my mother went to medical school and my father had to work many different jobs. It was a very stressful and hard time for both me and my family, as well as of the families of other immigrants in our communities. Mrs. Mayor, your story is particularly inspiring to me 
as a Mexican Filipino American, you were able to rise to leadership precision in your hometown of Bascovina. It gives inspiration to people like me, a Filipino American and immigrant, that I can overcome all adversity in my life and achieve anything. So my question is, can you please tell us about some adversities that you faced through your life and during your accession to the leadership position of the West Covina City Council? Yes, actually, if you saw me as a child, you would never imagine this poor girl, she won't become somebody. Ironically, you get hit the most from your own family and friends. And when you're young as a child, people are mean. And I know the world can be very mean and cruel. Um, my both parents are immigrants. Uh, my mom was from the Philippines. My dad was from Mexico. So they came here, you know, of course, not knowing the language and anything like that. So that was already a, a struggle. Um, I grew up, um, of course, with that. And my dad died when I was five years old. So it's just me, my brother and my mom. And my mom wasn't, you know, the standard, she was more of a, you know, housekeeper and uh, she works, takes care of the kids. And so I'm around that. And we, we move from place to place. We even stayed at a woman and children's shelter once. Um, so uh, the experience of the homeless, like I understand. Um, so when you think of like not having anything, not even having a home, not even having stability, it's, it's hard. Um, you know, it, and it's funny because, it, you know, I also had moving from place to place, I had gang members who lived next to me. I lived even in Rampart. I lived in Almani. I lived in Alhambra. I lived in different cities, actually, uh, room for rent or studios. So it, the, the harsh, it was difficult. And um, when people see me today, they, they have this stereotype or perception, especially, you know, they look at me young, female, um, and they make ideas. So I could give you an example, like when I was in Pasadena, one of my reconstructors looks at me and says, um, you don't know anything about poor. And I just smile because they, they see me, I smile and they're like, you know, you, don't, you probably don't, you know, life is grand and great. And so I told him, try me. And, you know, he was in Pasadena, I was African-American and I work, I mostly work in low income neighborhoods because I, I can relate. That's how I grew up. And he said, well, when I grew up, I had to sleep in the same bed as my mom. And I said, wow, you were privileged to have a bed because I had to sleep on a coffee table because if I slept on the floor and turn on the lights, the roaches goes or the mice goes. So, and he just stopped and he's like, oh. And I go, yes, so before you speak, know my history or background. So, um, you know, I had to work hard. I didn't have the support. I graduated, you know, I remember in high school, my counselor said, um, you know, let's go ahead and um, instead of like running away or doing bad or anything, she put me like on a three year plan. So I graduated high school in three years and I just wanted to do any, get away from like the, the living conditions that I had. It was, it was very, you can call it like abusive and stuff. Um, and so I pretty much um, went at 17, I went to college, I was on my own and being on your own with like nobody, it's, it's hard. So you try to connect um, organizations, talking to different people and just never give up, keep going. And I um, got my master's degree. I had many different jobs. I worked as a bank teller. I worked as a mentor. I worked as um, like with different cities as well in recreation. Um, I did, I even worked at 15 years old um, when people say the sweatshop, <laughs> you know, putting mini blinds. So I actually, I actually worked a lot of different jobs. Um, so I, there was a lot of just hardships, but eventually who would have ever thought surpassed it. And now here in position um, where, you know, in power and that you can make a difference and, you know, people listen. Well, back then, you know, they dismiss you. <laughs> so now it's like, who has the last laugh? But, um, but yeah, so it's, uh, it's, it's good. Thank you. Um, as the mayor of West Covina, you have a lot of experience in communicating effectively with others and overcoming adversity, which was essential to your success. For example, you mentioned that you first ran for the, for the West Covina City Council as an outsider to local politics 
which provided extra challenges. So what advice can you give to students who want to make a difference in their communities, but don't know how to start? The best thing is, even though people say you don't have po political experience, there's politics everywhere. There's politics within your family. There's politics in every organization you're in, every business. There's politics all the time. And like I said, I work in city of Los Angeles. I do remember when I knocked on one door, this gentleman says, I know who you are and I'm not gonna vote for you. And I said, why? And he said, because you don't know what you're doing, you're swimming with the sharks. And I said, try me. I've had enemies become friends. I had friends become enemies. I've been thrown under the bus. I've been backstabbed. I've been, you know, like anything that you could possibly name, I've already experienced that in, in LA or with other cities. And the good thing, what makes, what for me, what I feel, what makes a good politician is if they're well-rounded. So some politicians, they only had this as a political career. And I don't feel they understand the people's needs. So even with my city of LA, when I, you know, when the politicians up there give new policies and I'm like, it's not gonna work. And it's like one of those that they're gonna have to see it to fail. And it's because they're out of, they're out of um, connection. So they don't really understand the people because they, they, they never been there. They never had to work hard. They never had to um, just, it's only one-sided. So I just feel like a, a great politician is somebody who has just different wide experience. So as, um, you know, as a student, if you can participate in different organizations uh, like this, what you guys are doing now, I think it's great because you get to learn. You, you hear from people, you pick and choose and you're like, okay, I got like this, I'll go from there. Um, internship, if you can intern, like I interned uh, with City Hall in LA as HR. Um, and so I got to learn that side of human resources. And then of course, with different things with what I do. So City of West Covina is, we always have, it, we have an internship program, which you can look at the website. Some are paid, some are not paid. We have different organizations out there. Like uh, I partner up like I did, I don't know if you're aware, but I did the um, film at West Covina. We start, I start helped start the nonprofit. We got the students. So last year it was geared to junior high and high school students. So they all submitted a short film. They won cash prizes. And then this year with uh, COVID, you know, we did a virtual film festival. Um, so I also team up with other organizations that, you know, you guys can be part of like the Kiwanis or, um, you know, different, different organizations or, you know, you create your own and you, gather, but this is a great start with what you're doing. Um, so like I said, well-rounded, um, it's good to fail. It's good to try something that you probably think you won't like. Um, when I got into the city of LA, um, I didn't, my sports wasn't that great and I ran little things, but they threw me in there and I ended up becoming one of the uh, best sports organizer. And they even put me in the Metro region to oversee all stars and games. And it's something that I said, I would never want to do, but you know, I end up doing it. So you never know what you like until you try it. So you just have to try different things. And even if you tried it and you don't like it, you could actually say, I've done it before. So I know how it is. And you have that experience. So that, like I said, for students, dabble into everything, try everything out. And, um, you know, you'll always learn. And at the end, they all kind of go back and everything kind of is, is the same thing at the end. Mm -hmm. I know that you may have had people that doubted you and, and that also have different beliefs as you. For my question, I wanted to ask you, how have you put all of everybody's differences to the side to be the best mayor you can be? Oh, uh, that's, no matter what you um, do, I know that's, I, I, there's, I always say there's always haters, um, but there's always going to be somebody that doesn't just uh, agree. So I run sports and you, you see sports. It's always two teams. It's always, you know, and we're always rooting for one or the other. Um, and, and I run sports program and I tell them, sometimes it, it becomes a close call and I have to decide which side it's gonna be. And just like I tell like in my speech for the mayor, there's gonna be tough decisions and a decision's gonna be made. And guess what? Someone's not gonna be happy, no matter what, because there's yes and then there's no. I mean, you see it with all elections, nobody will get like a 90% or 100% vote. It's just impossible. It's always, you know, um, 
I, even when I ran, I got a negative hit piece on me. And I was like, that's a lie, <laughs> you know, but it's like, you just have to keep going forward. Um, my major is in communication studies, um, focus on intercultural and, you know, business communication. Um, I do a lot of, I, I do, I do read people. And so like, for example, I remember doing my thesis on resume deception. So I can tell when people are BSing me, <laughs> it's like, okay, you're full of it. Um, but, you know, I, I have to also respect and so forth um, the, the things of what everybody wants. So I tend to um, put everything together. My husband says I'm like glue. Um, I, I understand there's differences, um, but I like to compromise. So, uh, you know, I'll go in, what can we do to, so that it could be a win-win situation? I'm always about a win-win situation. Um, a lot of times I don't say no, like somebody would say, oh, we want this to happen. Or like, I give you an example, uh, negotiations, like for example, the union or something, if they want something. And I, I would say, uh, sure, if you could tell me a city that is allowing it a city that's doing it currently, or if they want, I know this uh, big case with the weed, um, cannabis. Um, and is it, there's people who don't want it and there's people who do. And they said, oh, it's extra revenue. And I, and I would say, if you could tell me a city that has it, that is doing well, then we can talk. But chances are they go and a lot of the cities that have it, they're in uh, war, this, you know, even if the bank bank industry doesn't even want to deal business with them, how do you generate the revenue? So I'm always open. I'll tell people, okay, let's talk about it. Let's see if it could be done. And then I, I always give both sides. So even if I say no, I'll explain my reasons for saying no. Um, I'll try to utilize um, facts, data, um, which I, I'm a research person. So I like to research everything that is um being brought to me because sometimes it sounds great like wow that's amazing I think that will do it but then after I research I'm like oh I don't think so or when you talk to certain cities or certain councils or certain you know wh whichever it may be so um like I said I it's just I I t I listen to all sides I'll always weigh the pros and the cons there's some things that I've you know move on one side but when I get new information from others then I move to the second side and, you know, residents also know that even people who are not too fond of me, that technically I could say, I don't even want to talk to you, but I still do. And if they are correct, I will go with, even though you might not be too fond of them, but their ideology or their reasoning is accurate. I will go because of that, not because of who they are, but because of what they're sharing. So yeah, that's, that's you know, we, it's always communication. Thank you. So as a council member and as the mayor, were there any problems that you faced such as gridlock within the council or difficulty coming to a consensus that you were able to overcome and contribute to making the ultimate verdict or even casting the deciding vote? Uh, yes. I mean, there are times when your current, your colleagues don't agree. Um, and that's why we're in council chambers, we discuss. And there are times where um, I remember like a council member would be like, no, that no, no, no. And then when I gather data and they have all this and they said, okay, you make sense, fine. Or they'll, like I said, compromise. Okay, we'll do this if that. Um, so if you notice, I don't think we have a record of voting everything the same way. You know, sometimes people make these assumptions. Oh, you guys are part of that majority and it's like if that is true then why would I vote no on that with that person or you know what I mean but they can't hit me with um but what I'm voting for so it's uh yeah you you will but it's just a matter just like sports it you you win some you lose some but if it's something very big and that I could be passionate about or something that's like injustice, then I would move forward and fight hard. But I would provide all the data that it's just difficult to say no to, um, because then it's then the the public starts coming and then doing their public comments or they fight. And you've seen it where they go against 
the councils or they go against you know the politician and make a big stink and you know sometimes blast you on social media and just doing all kinds of crazy things so i mean it happens um but you know some things you can let go and others you know you have to fight for it because that that is what's worth it um and then yeah we we just kind of work it out talk it out and then that's why we have the five votes and you know when as mayor i have the last the last cast of vote and if it's tied then i'm the the deciding factor to see which side they'll go towards thank you as a mayor of West Covina, you have become a leader for the city that I also reside in. For my question, I wanted to ask you was how have you worked with other organizations in the city like the West Covina Police Department, local business clubs, and also local youth groups to help improve the safety of West Covina? So we do have the Youth Council. We do like we're promoting the internship program. We have the Explorer program for the police and fire, which I've spoken to. Um, any programs that we do, we'll have them join in so that they'll be part of any of the special events or any programming. So I like to involve different communities and um, different groups. Um, you know, there, there's, you know, there's a story I have to mention with, because I know sometimes there's this whole, you, some people will want to defund police. Um, and they don't understand the whole factors. And that's why I always ask, like, have you ever had to call police? Have you ever need to? Because I've, I've been in situations where, you know, I see somebody, you know, like get murdered or get something. Um, but I remember I, I personally did a uh, ride along with the police and fire. So I do remember the night with the police. Um, I had the sergeant there and he, you know, he gave me the tour of the facility and, you know, doing the brief. And then he asked me if I ever shot uh, shot a gun before and I have and so he told me where you know the, his pistols are and his gun in case anything should happen to him during the ride-along and then we go downstairs um, to do the ride-along right when we were about to begin in the car he gets a phone call and said arm robbery at 7-eleven and I was like oh that 7-eleven is near my mother-in-law's house and I was like, he's all buckle up. I'm like, oh, great. <laughs> you know, he just showed me how to, you know, with his gun. And now, you know, we're going to go chase an armed robbery who, you know, robbed 7-Eleven near my mother-in-law's house. So I, I find that very interesting. And that's something that I would also recommend in the near future for any of you to do those ride-alongs at least once and go on a Friday or Saturday night. So because that's when all the actions occur. Because um, I work the uh, Summer Night Lights program in LA, which is the gang prevention so you, you see everything for as is. So it's kind of nice to um, see that, to implement that. But of course, our police does good overall. You know, they, they do a lot of charity. They do a lot of giving. Um, but like I said, I'll try to implement and have the organizations work together. Um, and like I just recently, two weeks ago, I had the Slime with Santa event, which was geared to the foster homeless and low income children. And I had other organizations uh, partner up and they gave these children more than what they bargained for. They got a comfort bag that has like the necessities and comfort items. Um, and they had, um, you know, they, they had a toy that they get to choose. They got a slime where they could do a virtual workshop after. So it was something different that not a lot of people have to keep this group intact because that was a group that I used to belong to many years ago. So that one has um, bearing, but like I, I would involve like Kiwanis or, you know, the police is there, the fire is there. So they either sponsor or they give their time, time or money that they give, um, but it always gives back to the community. So yeah, we, we bring everybody together. Thank you. So um, as a leader and as the mayor, it seems like you've have, you've had to make a lot of difficult decisions. So what advice would you have for young people in uh, making difficult decisions as they ascend to a leadership position? We have, people have their beliefs. So um, you have your own belief, obviously. And, you know, I know sometimes we say we have our sixth sense, like, you know, what feels wrong and what feels right. Um, for making decisions, I always suggest obviously if it's a difficult to weigh out your options I like to put pros cons and I'd like to get the facts and the research and whichever has the more like it's it's just kind of like the um the seesaw or totter you know you just 
put all that in whichever ways more obviously is that that's the decision you're going to make because any decision you make it will haunt you and people i know we've had one council who made one decision and then later on uh, changed it and after stating it twice of making a no and then changing it to yes and people hit him with that um for me your word is everything um I, I tell people you can't buy buy me out. You can't money because the things that I personally value is priceless. You know, you can't buy sleep. You can't buy happiness. You can't buy those things. So they know that they can't. And, and don't get me wrong. There are some people they'll say, oh, here's some money. You know, can you vote on this? And people do that, you know, or but for me, it's 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 something that you can sleep, sleep your conscious. Um, knowing that you did the right thing, knowing that you made the right decision, that is best for all and not selfish, that is only for you. Um, so like I said, weigh your options, um, know what, you know, what the people want. And sometimes people might not know what they want, but if it's heavy decisions like that, um, you know, you know, the, the consequences, history repeats itself. So sometimes they, they go back to history and we go back and we said, okay, this is similar to this time and we're going to go back. So a lot of things that are occurring right now is repeating from the past. Um, some people can't see that. Some people could, but if you're well-rounded and you know, you have a, you have good morals, values, I think most likely you'll do the right thing. Thank you for answering that previous question. Um, sometimes it's hard for students to organize from everyday things like schedules, to organizations. I was wondering um, how you organize things or events in your life. And if possible, how do you prepare for future problems? That is difficult or organizing. I know we always say try to balance, but sometimes it's not really balancing. It's because whatever you're going to do, guess what? Something's going to give. So I am a full-time mom. You know, if I have family. I have a full-time job. I have this council that is part-time, but I almost put in as a full-time position, um, giving in more time and effort because I, I care. And when you care, sometimes it's a, a burden. You, you do a lot more than traditional. Um, I try to, so the biggest thing I have my phone, my cell phone that has the calendar and all, you know, I know technology, if you could use technology for you, great. Um, it sends me reminders or if we have meetings, it'll, it'll put that there. I'll try to schedule. I can tell you before the old me, I was like burned out, overwhelmed, stressed because I was doing everything. Um, I mean, if you could delegate, great, get the help that's needed. But we also know that's the 80-20 rule. You know, 80% doesn't do the work and 20% does. If you have like a whole group, there's always that small batch. Um, you know, if you can I have like I have a good also support system, my husband and my in laws if I you know I'm open so I'm not going to tell them don't do this to my children you know they have their ways and you have to give and take you have to let things go you can't you know you can't aim for perfection. There's no way you can't do everything yourself there's no way, um, but you give and take and also you know what what is a priority so the old me before I never took care of myself, and that is important because if without your mind, body, everything, you're, you can't do the job. So it's like if you're in the airplane and the, the mask comes out down, what do they say? Put the mask on yourself first before, you know, your kids, but normally they, they automatically their kid. But the problem is if you take care of them and not yourself, then you can no longer take care of them because you won't, you know, make it your week or anything. So now I try to schedule me time at least once a month. And you have to schedule that in. I make sure I schedule in my family. I'll make sure I, I, I'll put things, everything will be scheduled in so we can make sure I can accommodate and help everybody. Um, I'm not on social media a lot. Um, sometimes that, that drains you, that takes up your time. I'm not, I detox the negative people <laughs> or the ones who bring you down. I always tell people, if you're not part of the solution, you're part of the problem. So if you're just caught, Call, you know, complaining and blaming, then you're just whining. You know, I, if you're going to come to me and I tell my staff the same thing and I tell, you know, if you're going to come to me with, you know, problems, at least come with solutions or suggestion and then we can work it out. Because my motto now is how can we fix it? 
How can we fix it? Because I, at work and here, I get a lot of complaints, a lot of problems, a lot of, and people who are happy, they're not going to go to you. So at my work, when they say, can I speak to the director? It's like, what's the problem? You know, it's a problem. It's like, if they're happy, they're not going to see that. So um, I guess, again, being well-rounded and experienced, my job as a recreation director, you know, I run sports, special events, programs. Somebody's always not happy. There's, you can never run a perfect event. Something's always going to give. If you had a birthday party, you'll know, like something's always, somebody forgot something or there's always. So I mean, I try to have plan B, plan C, plan D and up, but I also have to learn that, you know, it, it's not always going to happen. Um, we always, my staff knows like plan for the, it says uh, prepare for the best or I forgot the, the, now I forgot it. It was a plan for the best, a uh, hope, hope for the best and, you know, expect the worst or something. So we know something will always occur, but it's okay if you don't know it, if you don't know, um, if you don't have the answer, I mean, I, I don't, not no one person knows everything so everybody has their strength focus like I like to focus on everybody's strength because we all know everybody has weakness but what good is it focusing on their weakness and I use their strength to whatever they can do and I feel that's what makes a good organization um you know our council too I mean I might not agree with certain councils ways but you know let me focus on their strength and then utilize that and then we'll work on it and get things going because like in our city council, I told them we all have the same goal. Our goal is to improve the city um, as best we can. And sometimes people forget and they use, you know, I just have to remind them, like, what is our goal again? What is, you know, what do we need to focus again? And, you know, let's forget about the other little petty stuff. Um, but yeah, like help, um, you know, if people can take offload. I mean, the staff helps in, in the city, you know, uh, some things that the Google share, the emails, we do a lot of emails or um, meetings and stuff. And, and for me, it's just my staff, well, the city knows for me, my most important thing is communication. Um, so we can all be in the same page. So we don't go like, you know, what's going on? So we all, we can all say, hey, we know. I mean, I, I said, send me the emails, even though I might not read it for the moment, it's there, you did your part. So everybody did their part. And, and at the end, we can't say you didn't know. So yeah, it's just use whatever we can and get that scheduled in and think of yourself. And if you have to unwind and breathe, you know, go for it and then get ready to rock and roll and work hard again. Mm -hmm. Thank you. While students are always encouraged to take on leadership roles in their schools or communities, many are nervous about the possibility of failure or letting others down. So my question is, how can students prepare themselves for becoming more involved in their communities or taking on leadership positions? I always say, try, try, try. And actually, failure is actually pretty good. If you look at all the leaders, even any of the leaders, you'll see that they had a history of failure. So like the biggest business, like 3M, you know, they, they made post-its and it became a success or um, you hear Michael Jordan or, you know, some of the sports where they played baseball, they, they were horrible. They failed at it and became great at basketball. Um, I always, that's why I said with experience, I prefer like, you know, I had to do interviews for uh, coordinators for my city, but I prefer somebody who's gone through a lot because they know how it is versus somebody who's perfection. Um, when it, when something happens, you're done. They'll panic. They'll go down. Um, you know, like this pandemic, you, people are put to the test when you have nothing and that's when you can see. So I, I would say, take the, the leap. You just never know. Um, a lot of people are in their comfort zone. They're, they're scared and people will go by fear. Um, you know, like I have a cousin who's in the same boat as me, but she was scared to branch out. I branched out, I left my home life and I, I branched out because I felt like I had nothing to lose. And the people who are fearless, who feels like they have nothing to lose, they are stronger, they move better. Um, and for me, I, I always love the underdogs because they're the ones that nobody, 
everybody saw me and they least expected. Um, they, it was funny, I had somebody, when I ran against the four men, um, I had people, during my election, people would say things and um, they left me hanging. A lot of them left me hanging, to tell you the truth. I, I even was at a moment, I'm like, oh my gosh, why am I even doing this? You know, I get a negative hit piece on me. Um, people who said they were going to support me didn't end up supporting me. People who said they were going to help me fundraise didn't. I had to pull my own money. Um, but you just finish strong. And sometimes when you fail on something, another opportunity comes up. And you just never know where life takes you. And that I could say, try, like I said, try something you never did before um, because then you're just, you're just better. And, um, you know, you're more well-respected uh, and nobody can say anything about you. Um, I, told, I, I told somebody recently that no resident can ever tell me, Letty, you don't understand because I've been through all of it like you tell me anything, my, my side of the family has it all. I know my husband's side, he has the Brady Bunch. It's like perfect. You know, my side, like it has, you know, I, I used to tell people like Jerry Springer. I don't, I know that's probably too old for you guys, but that was like with all the drama that happened, like I've experienced and have that. And at that time, at that moment, at that place, I just thought, you know, you feel like, oh, life sucks. Like you, there's nothing you can do. Um, who am I? I'm nobody but you've gone through all of that. And later on, you're like, I've been there. I've had that, go ahead. And I, it does make you stronger. At the moment, you're just like, you break down. You're just saying why, but then later on, it's like, oh, I've been there. I've tried that, or this happened and you, you're better. So failure, failure is good. And yeah, it's impossible. It's just good stuff. You have to fail. I mean, you don't have to, but I mean, it's best if you don't, but we've all failed. Everybody failed once. I mean, whether it's your driving light driver's test or an exam or, or on a date trying to ask somebody out or whatever it is, like we all failed. But all I can say, the biggest thing about failure is to improve. Now, if you make the same mistake, you fail the same way over and over and over. That means you're not learning anything. So that's on you. So if you fail, improve, get better. And that's what makes you better. So learn from your failure. I think that's the most important thing. Mm -hmm. Thank you for sharing that. Um, because some students such as myself struggle with being a speaker, I wanted to ask you for advice on how to grow and improve as a speaker. Furthermore, I was wondering on how to be convincing or at least look the part as a speaker as well. Um, when I, as a speaker, I mean, I, I made, like I said, I majored in communication studies and don't get me wrong. I get nervous a lot of times too. Um, I used to be in the entertainment industry. I used to be, uh, I used to act. I actually, uh, was on a TV show and I was on a, um, you know, I did movies and my daughter recently, we were on the first five commercial. So, you know, being in front of people is almost, my husband actually has a, a face with six different masks. And he always says, you have to put on a, a mask at all, you know, different times. So you almost have to pretend. I mean, of course, you need to keep yourself, you, however you are. If you're a nice person, you're not, you're firm. I mean, you have to keep the real you. But on certain things, you need to portray, and I would say preparation, practice. I mean, as actors, you um, read your script, you act it out. And sometimes, you know, some people do it in, in front of the mirror, they speak in front of the mirror, or if you could record yourself and play it back, you know, that would be good. Or if you can do like, you know, when I was an, a coordinator before and I was, um, I wanted to be a director many years ago, I, uh, I said, I wanted to do mock interviews and I approach the meanest, person ever she she scored number one on on her test and I went to her and here I rather fail privately than fail in public so I went to her I called her up her name was you know Louise Capone and you know she's part of the Capone family and so I told her um I said I'd like to uh do a mock interview and she's like 
and who are you? And I said, oh, you know, I, I'm so-and-so, I, I know who you are. Even, actually, even in the council too, before I ran for council, I spoke to other councilwomen who were similar to me. I said, I need to speak to a, a councilwoman who has children and a family and has a, a job, a full-time job, because I didn't know if I can do it because that's, that's a lot. And the council in Arcadia, she has that. She met the criteria and another one. And I was like, man, they could do it. I could do it too. Because we, we self-doubt sometimes. Um, so going back to this uh, person for the interview, um, and she she even like, you know, would bring me down. And I was like, you know what? That's okay. I'll take it. Because she's like, oh, she said, of course, I'll help the needy. I was like, wow. Okay. I'll take it. I need, I'll, I'll take your hits. And then when I go in that boardroom and do interviews, you know, I'll improve. And she gave me the best advice ever. You know, she stopped me during my um, mock interview and she said, blah, 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 blah. And, and I was like, whoa. And then she's like, you know, you need to focus on this. And, and that's, that's what's good. So going out, practicing, practicing, practice makes perfect. So that's the same thing with speaking. Um, do it in different ways. Um, hear yourself, see yourself, um, have others see yourself, um, have the critique should be critical critiquing. It shouldn't be like, oh, you suck. Cause what good is that? You know, um, I coached my husband coached and I remember my husband coached bowling and you know, the parent was like, hit a strike, hit a strike. And it's like, don't you think I want to hit a strike? Like that's not productive. Like how show me, tell me where to step, how to throw because everybody wants to hit a strike. So, um, public speaking, like I said, practice with different things you can do two ways. You can record yourself. So you see your video, your, your stance, how you do things, um, record yourself so you could hear it, you know, based on how the tone and everything. And I, I mean, or take a class, take a public speaking class. Um, that helps because it teaches you proper breathing. It teaches you eye contact. It teaches you body because we communicate many ways. So we communicate nonverbal and then we communicate verbal. So, um, but even the books, I know sometimes YouTube has it. The library has a lot of resource. Um, when I was younger, I used, utilized the library a lot because I didn't have money back then. So I get things for free. And the library even has um, uh, like the Amazon Kindle stuff. So instead of purchasing at Amazon, you could just get it from the library and borrow it and return it. And then they, they go through the Amazon Kindle. So I still... To this day, I'll, I'll, I'll always continue to learn because I always feel there's always something to learn all the time. And, um, you know, I never stop growing by learning. So, you know, whatever makes you better. Im improvements are always good and practice. Thank you. When it comes to the community, what can students like myself do to help out in our communities and keep our city safe and also keep it great for the, pe great for the people who want to move into those cities? get involved. Uh, involvement's a big thing. Like I said, what you're doing now, um, if you can, you could even start with your neighbors just to introduce yourself to your neighbors. You start small. A lot of people want to go grand and then, you know, they forget it's baby steps. It's, you have to take each step. Um, and then you just, like I said, um, not just your neighbors, but your friends, if, if you guys do certain things like this or, and then the organizations, different organizations that's out there, even if you try it for six months, a year or something, you, you meet new people and you learn new things. Um, so the best advice is just get involved, try everything um, and, and learn, uh, improve. And, but I always tell people this, um, there's book smart, and street smart. So an example of this is like driving. Somebody can know the whole manual of how to properly drive correctly, but then when they're right there to actually do it, horrible. So it's it's the same thing of there's knowing and actually doing. So there's people that we see all the time that they know a lot, but they don't practice it. And so when they put it on, it's the same thing as coaching and player uh, playing. The players can't coach and the coaches can't play because, you know, there's a, you know, history with that, but um, yeah, involvement and get your feet wet and try it, try do things. Thank you. So in terms of fundraising and community outreach, 
Is there any specific advice that you would have for a newly formed student organizations such as ours or other student clubs on how to make themselves known in the community and garner as much support as possible? Um, to tell you the truth, people love students. They are, they're always willing to support students. The school, school districts sometimes um, assist with that. So they can, they, you can partner up with them. And sometimes, you know, I know they do little mini fundraisers where they could get involved or you can link up with um, like the local restaurants because some restaurants or some places they'll, they'll donate, you know, or sponsor if you have events or activities, they'll, they'll sponsor. Um, and of course it's easier if you have your nonprofit or, you know, if it's big enough and they have like a shaky night or, you know, I, I know like sometimes a school, if you notice some of the elementary or junior high or high school, they'll say, oh, I mean, of course you could do the typical sell chocolates, but you know, I, I know you want to do certain different things. Um, there's also, if you partner up with different organizations that can possibly lead. So something like this, if it's, it depends on what you're geared more, you can um, contact like, you know, maybe the law, uh, law firm or something that, will sponsor um, whether something like this or, you know, uh, I mean, there's different, different things and fundraiser. I know that I know we used to do a fundraiser. I used to be in a sorority <laughs> in college and, you know, we did fundraisers and um, there's actually like even books on there. So the, all the information and resources are all out there. I know it's, it's to go look and research and, and find it, but there's different ways to, fundraise, but it depends on what you're trying to fundraise for. Um, you know, people like to give to a good cause. Uh, so you have to find what your purpose is. Uh, like I, you know, I helped create the uh, film at West Covina. So if you check out the website and stuff, it's a newly formed uh, nonprofit, um, but it's a niche. And when we have a film festival, it's, um, you know, they, it's for that and for the students and people love to support students. And with this uh, platform, with Film at West Covina, if we wanted to do something like, I know the first year we did different categories and one of them was like, almost like civic duties or um, PSA, school and, and city PSA and what I love about West Covina and um, different things like that. Um, there's a niche. So if you have a niche, even great. If you have, um, if, if there's something that helps, people like to give and help for those certain things. But what, what things are you planning to fundraise for? What are you trying to, because a lot of people also, if you work with certain groups, um, instead of like the, you know, the, I always say people give time or money. Um, if you don't have the money, you have the time. That's why when they say, oh, but I'm poor, I'm like, oh, but you have the time and time equals money. Um, there's other places that they will give you like, okay, if you need a room or a location, you don't have to pay for that. So that's kind of offset, you know, for them to permit that somebody else could be like $300, but they're willing to give it to you for free to rent that, that out. That's also as similar to that concept of, um, you know, however else, it depends on what you plan to do. Um, as a newly formed organization, I believe we're definitely going to hit a few road bumps along the way. So because of that, I would like to ask you for advice on what to prioritize and also some ways to tackle um, that thing to prioritize. You look at this like it's like a business. Every business, every company startup, they all struggle. They all have road bumps. They all have everything. Um, even running, you know, as a newly elected running, we get a, a lot of road bumps. Um, you have to build the trust. You have to prove it's all like for me, I always, I know my husband says, you always have to prove yourself everywhere you go. Like, you know, especially I go into sports and they look at me and they're like, who are you? And then they doubt you. Um, so with, with, um, I guess I would say, look at other similar organizations um, and what they're doing. And you don't want to, uh, how to say, don't, don't read, oh, what's that word? Um, don't rebuild, don't, don't do this. I forgot the term now. Um, but pretty much if, if something's already existing, oh, don't reinvent the wheel. So that, that's what it is. Don't reinvent the wheel. So if there's something that's similar to your organization, because you can have a similar organization in another state, but it's, it's here, it's going to be brand new. 
So for example, my film at West Covina in LA, short films, student films, popular big there. In the San Gabriel Valley, there's not a lot. And for me to start that up, there was roads and bumps. So I would say, look at an organization that kind of almost is similar to you. And you kind of like, not, not copy, but you know, have a similar format because all nonprofit and organization, they run very similar. You know, they have the bylaws, they have, um, you know, the order and all these different things that you need to have. Of course, we are president, vice president, treasurer and all that stuff um, that all comes into play. But, you know, you need to learn that. So you need to you need to strategize what but it goes back to what you want. It's hard to give you something if, if we don't know where to go. But for the most part, they all kind of are the same. Like they research, they they gather, they go um, unless you're you have a niche and it's something unique or different that people will jump on. But uh, there's a lot of factors. And, e and even with business, some businesses might sound lucrative and great, but it fails. And then some hole on the wall is popular. So you just never know. Um, but I just, I just always say hard work. It takes a lot of hard work. Um, always have to be on it. And you guys will fight. It, it's just normal. It's like a family because you know, you get tired, you, you don't agree. And then, but when you see it accomplish, you guys are going to appreciate and you'll, you'll be happy with the results. But um, like I said, I, I, at this point, it's research, knowing, knowing who you are. And that, I think that's the hardest with people today, especially with all the social media, nobody knows who they are, or they try to become somebody they're not. And you're going to have a hard time if that is not your personality, that's not your ways. Um, so finding who you are is the biggest thing. And this, in this case is finding what your organization is. Like, what is your organization all about? Thank you so much for joining us and taking the time out of your day. Uh, we really appreciate you uh, showing, uh, showing us your inspiring words and have a nice day.